we're going to look at another refractive error, which is uh, hyperopia, also called farsightedness. Hyperopia basically is a um, condition where one sees uh, distant objects very well, but uh, when the objects are nearby or they go closer to the objects, it becomes a bit blurry. So that's why it actually it's actually called farsightedness. So normally people with this um, condition will be able to see objects at a great distance. Um, while um, those who have some mild form of it may be able to clearly see objects that are that are closer. So anyway, pathophysiology is um, we can have this occurrence occurring in um, any of these uh, three ways when um, <clears throat> the, high, the, the eye possesses an insufficient uh, refractive, uh, refractive index or the refractive power is not that good enough. Therefore, the image, the, the light is actually converted, but at the, at the back of the retina. Also, if we have a shorter um, eyeball, uh, that, that means that the convergence will be behind. And the third reason is um, if the lens is too near to the retina, if the um, anterior posterior uh, length or between the lens and the retina is short, then we'll, we are going to have um, the image formed behind. So the effects of all these three uh, possibilities is that the convergence of the light is at a point posterior to the retina, uh, as you can see. Therefore, we know that if light converges behind the retina, we will not form an image. Therefore, we'll have to compensate for this. So compensation happens uh, in a way that um, uh, one will try to actually move um, objects further away from their eyes so that actually the light can converge at the retina. Or they will have to move away from the object to actually see clearly. Okay, so that is the actual compensation that is made so that um, the light does not converge behind the retina. So the people who are at risk of getting um, or having this problem, um, um, people within certain age groups and uh, some racial ethnic groups are at higher risk than others, uh, mothers who smoke during pregnancy and also hereditary factor is uh, quite often linked. Uh, if you're from a family that has history of uh, hyperopia, then there's a chance that the, the offspring will actually have the same condition. So we have different types of myopia. We have latent uh, hypermetropia. So hypermetropia is the other name for hyperopia. So it is these actually types of uh, hyperopia and not myopia. So we have latent hypermetropia, which is normally corrected by a physiological tone of the ciliary muscle. Um, and then we have facultative hypermetropia, uh, which is part of the error, which can be corrected by an effort of accommodation. So uh, by effort of accommodation, we can correct the farsightedness. Uh, but we have absolute hypermetropia that cannot be um, corrected by any form of accommodation or the ciliary tone. Okay, so diagnosis is uh, <clears throat> simply the same thing that we had for myopia, basically visual acuity test and the retinoscopy will be the most, um, um, there will be the best uh, standard eye exams that are, can be done for this. So the clinical picture is um, nearby objects basically will be a bit blurry and therefore somebody will try to push them or put the object far away. Um, squinting will be there, eye straining, including um, sensation of eye burning, um, aching in or around the eye. We're basically having just general discomfort, like uh, having headache um, after doing close tasks or such as writing and reading. So how do we correct this problem? Um, so hyperopia is corrected by use of a biconvex lens. And the purpose of this is to converge the light uh, even further, okay? So whatever um, corrective measure you're going to use, whether you're going to use glasses or other things, that they have to actually uh, converge the light even more, okay? So that now the light does, isn't focused behind the retina, it is actually focused at the retina. So the management will simply uh, be uh, eyeglasses that have um, 
such kind of lenses that we've just talked about or contact lenses would actually uh, be very useful. For extreme forms, then um, other laser surgeries might be done and that is just to affect um, the shape of the cornea. So like uh, the LASIK uh, procedure, the LASIK or the photorefractive keratectomy uh, procedure. So thank you very much.